Hey everyone, Golden Ninja 3000 here again. Today I'm really excited to be back with another LEGO art review. This is set number 76271, Batman the Animated Series Gotham City. It's got 4,210 pieces and it retails for 300 US dollars. This released in April 2024 and this is I think one of the best LEGO art sets ever made and one of the coolest LEGO Batman sets ever made. I'm a huge Batman fan, I've realized that ever since the Batman came out in 2022, and so even though I haven't seen the animated series, getting a Gotham City skyline depicted like this in LEGO is just incredible. Before we get into it though, I do want to remind everyone that I am an employee of the LEGO group. However, all opinions expressed in these videos are my own and do not necessarily reflect the views of the LEGO group, and the LEGO is a registered trademark of the LEGO group of companies, which does not sponsor, authorize, or endorse this site. Of course, no direct-to-consumer LEGO set would be complete without some brand new exclusive minifigures. So starting things off, we have the animated series version of Batman, who looks super classic. I love his torso and leg prints. He does have dual molded legs, which is awesome, but I really wish that the leg print wrapped around the side of his leg, because you can see his like underwear things, for lack of a better term, his trunks, I guess. They don't wrap around the side, and so that does make it look like a little bit strange just on the front. So this figure would have been perfect with that side leg printing, but other than that, it looks amazing. I really, really love the cape here. It is one of those two-tone capes, so it's dark blue on the inside, and then it's black on the outside. I absolutely love that. He does have some back printing as well. I want to be very careful with that cape, but uh, that's what it looks like. And Let me just smooth that out. And then he just does have that standard face print that's been used for him for a couple of years now. It's just like a generic face. It's also used for Malfoy and Harry Potter. But he does have the newer cowl with the dual molded eyes. And I think that that works really well for this minifigure, even though I didn't love it on the 1989 version of the character. Next up, we have Catwoman, who is Batman's on and off again girlfriend. She looks fantastic. Also dual molded legs for her. I really like the torso print. Again, it's just very classic animated style. She is using the Black Panther ears in light bluish gray for the first time, and her face print looks perfect. All of the printing is done really well there. I like her black arms. She's holding a whip and a stolen diamond, and she does have some nice back printing. She is my least favorite figure in the set, just because I think she's the least interesting, but she's been brought to life really well. Next up is the Joker. He looks fantastic. That new face print, it really captures the look of the animated series Joker, because I remember seeing him and Batman a lot, even though I didn't watch the show, like I know what they look like, and that's just great. His torso print is nice. No printed legs, which I think is okay for a character like the Joker, but everyone else comes with detailed legs in this set, so it would be nice if he had something. He's just holding a bundle of dynamite. I don't know if a better accessory could have been included because it just feels a little bit strange for him to be holding dynamite. I would expect him to be holding like a pistol or something. I really love his hairpiece. That's new in dark green, that piece that's been used for Joker minifigures since 2012. And it looks really good in dark green. I just really like the color scheme here. And he does have an alternate face too. So all in all, this is just a fantastic version of the Joker. And again, like everything else in the set, it's just so classic. That's There's no better way to describe it. And speaking of classic, I have saved the best for last, Harley Quinn. She is one of my favorite DC characters, and she was introduced for the first time in the animated series. She did not originate in the comics, and this is an incredible version of her classic costume. Because Harley Quinn nowadays is a lot more like Margot Robbie's version from the Suicide Squad, where, you know, she's got the, like, the blonde hair with the pink and blue, not really the red and black, but getting her in this red and black outfit is just amazing. Everything is two-toned here, like, you can see that the hat, of course, is printed as always, but even the head print, I mean, I'll take off the hat to show you this, but the head print, it, it's got some black on the side so that when you put the hat on, like, she is accurately two-toned, and that's so clever, because when I pulled this out of the bag, I thought it was misprinted. Like, I thought that her face print was not centered on the black, but it's supposed to look like that so that you just get this look. That's fantastic. The printing could be, like, slightly better, because, I mean, the white on her torso, on the hat, and on her face, it's a little bit washed out, as we've come to expect from LEGO. But the graphic design is perfect. 
I really love the diamonds on her legs. I actually have a tattoo of Harley Quinn's diamonds, and it's like exactly in this motif. She has some slight print on her toes. She even has hip printing. Like half of that hip piece is printed black. That is incredible attention to detail. I'm so, so pleased with that. And her hands are different colors as well. They actually came out of the bag incorrect, like the black hand was on the black arm, but the instructions did show it this way, so I did swap the hands around, but I wonder if that's an error everyone is seeing with their set. She does have this little built-up pistol. I wonder if it's supposed to be like one of Joker's Joker guns because it has that extra build on the end, but she does have some back printing as well and an alternate face. So all in all, I think that this is one of the best LEGO versions of Harley Quinn to date, maybe second only to the Suicide Squad version from Welcome to Apocalypseburg. The minifigures do come with this rooftop style minifigure stand that's become standard for direct-to-consumer Batman sets. This is slightly different from the build for the 1989 Batman sets though, so that's nice to see. I love the little gargoyles. I really like how this whole thing is kind of built on its side. Like, this is upwards building and then you kind of flip it over, so that's pretty awesome. And the figures look amazing here all together. They're just, these are really great figures for this set. I'm so happy with them. I tried messing around with the order. This is the order shown like on the top of the box. And I tried putting like Batman here followed by his villains or Batman and Joker in the center, but nothing looked as good as this configuration. And I think it's because in this configuration, you have the two best minifigures in the middle. So this is awesome. Um, it's just, it's a good build. And all of these figures are not exclusive to this set. Batman is exclusive with this cape, but this minifigure with a different cape will be coming in a summer set with Harley Quinn. So for now, the only two real exclusive minifigures are Catwoman and Joker, but I think that's totally fine. You know, I love it when we get new minifigures in direct-to-consumer sets, and as long as something about them remains exclusive, like this cape with this Batman, I'm totally fine with the same minifigure appearing in a much cheaper set because it just means that more people get to enjoy the minifigures. So, you know, I don't want the best Harley Quinn minifigure ever locked behind a $300 set. I'm really happy that more people will be able to get her for cheaper in August. As for the build itself, this is an art set, so it's a lot of plate building, but there's plenty of brick building too. Just as a brief overview, like, this is what the animated series Gotham City looked like. It was done in this, like, dark art deco style, which the instruction manual calls dark deco. It has a bunch of stickers made to use these details. We'll talk about that. I'm really not happy about it. There are 61 stickers in this set, which I feel like are 50 too many. But I really like the overall visual impact. It's super striking with the dark red clouds and the red sky. You've got that huge bat signal in the center there. You have a really nice mix of like short and tall buildings. And this thing has a ton of depth to it and a bunch of hidden Easter eggs because you can remove a bunch of these building facades to reveal sticker decorations. You also have the brick built Batman lettering at the top, which is a really nice font, you know, I don't know how else to describe it. It's just, it's a unique like Lego font and it feels a little bit unnecessary, but then I also really like it just because it adds such a stylistic flair to this set that's already super heavy on the style. So let's just cover some of the more significant details before taking a closer look because this is really hard to capture like all in frame. Not as hard as some other big sets, but you know, to get a close up, I'm not going to be able to have it zoomed out like this. So over on the left, you do have these kind of police blimps in the air. You've got the bat wing, and that's Arkham Asylum and the Gotham Botanical Garden in the corner. Then you have like a Joker amusement park along with Ace Chemicals, which is, of course, where the Joker became the Joker. You also have the Laugh Palace, which I guess is a comedy club. You've got this tall building, which I don't know what that is. You have something called Diamond, which... I don't know, that kind of looks like a fancy hotel to me. You've got the Gotham City Museum, and it looks like a hospital with that cross on the front. I really like this building here, actually, because of, like, those three diamond pieces. Then there's the bat signal. You have Wayne Enterprises as the tallest building in the city with the GCPD in front of it. There's the Gotham Opera. I don't know what that building with the little statues on it is, but we will start to take a closer look at some of these details. Um, and then honestly, I don't know what like some of these other signs refer to, like the cat and everything, but you've got the Gotham City Court. You can see a hint of the Riddler there, Galaxy Broadcasting, a few more blimps, uh, the nice blue colored moon, 
And then you have polys, which I think is some kind of club. You have stacked deck. I don't know what that is either. Again, I'm not an animated series fan. But then finally, you have like a little winding road up to Wayne Manor that's sitting off apart from the rest of the city. Taking a quick look at the back of this set, I want to point out a few things that sets it apart from other art sets. And that's the fact that it's not built using those large like base plate style pieces that were introduced in like 2020 with the first art mosaics. Instead, it's just built on regular 16 by 16 and 8 by 16 plates. And you can see it's got a totally different building style on the bottom where you can really start to see the depth of the model. And it does actually come with a couple of Technic stands at the bottom, which I'll pull out. Hopefully that makes them a little bit more visible. They are right there in the corners. So that allows you to stand this thing up on its own, like on a shelf, or you can still hang it on the wall with the typical wall hanger pieces. There are two built in, super reinforced, as you can see, which makes sense because this I believe it's the heaviest art set ever because I think it's heavier than the world map because that's just all one by one studs. This is like a lot of brick building. Uh, so yeah, so you've got a hanger over there. You have a hanger over here and the whole back is reinforced with a bunch of the new reddish orange color. So that's awesome because I do believe Lego designers, whenever there's a new color, they just try to throw as many parts as they can into different sets to get more of the color out to Lego fans. And that's really how I feel here, because there was no reason to have everything at the back be reddish orange, but most of it is, and that's really cool, because if you want reddish orange pieces, you just need to swap these out with like some black parts from your collection. You do start the build from right to left, so you actually start with Wayne Manor, and you build that half of the structure first before you do like the second half starting with Arkham Asylum. It was a little bit of a weird way to build, like you build the man section of the mosaic or not the mosaic the art piece yeah you build like the man half first and then you build the bat half so it was a little bit strange but honestly i really expected the building process to be way worse i mean art sets are beautiful but they are sometimes very tedious to build this set was not tedious at all it was split into 44 bags each bag took me an average of 11 minutes because i do time my big set builds and it was a pleasure to put together just because the techniques are so varied, the buildings are so different, there's a lot of brick building, it's not just plate building, so it was actually really fun to assemble. But starting with the finer details, we're going to zoom into the corner, so like I said, here is Arkham Asylum, above it we have the Batwing flying in the air, that doesn't have like any hidden features to it or anything. Uh, but we do have the police blimp, so I'll actually just briefly talk about that. I really like the way these blimps are built. They look fantastic. I love just like the angled beams of light coming down from them. One of my favorite techniques in the set. What I don't like is that that's a sticker. That piece should not be a sticker. It is applied on a curve. And when parts are that curved, they should be printed. I think that putting stickers on pieces like that is just annoying and they probably will peel over time because stickers tend to peel off of curved pieces more easily than off of flat pieces. And that is not the last time I will complain about stickers because like I said there are 61 and it's just overkill. Like you're telling me that stuff like this couldn't have been printed or like this stuff couldn't have been printed. It's just it's a lot of stickers. The detail is really nice but Again, it just felt like an extreme amount of overkill because art sets never have stickers. Like, I can't think of one art set that has stickers in it. To be fair, most art sets don't have this many decorations. Usually it's just one or two printed pieces, but it's still, I feel like it's quite excessive. But actually getting into the details, here is the Gotham Botanical Garden. So you can just remove this entire section. And you can also remove this little road up to Arkham. And I really like the way these sections are built because this is the front gate, which looks wonderful. And then this is like a forced perspective road that winds up to the actual building. And the forced perspective, it just, it works really, really well in this set. The botanical garden does have plenty of plants growing in it. And those are reddish orange flowers, which are nice to see. This is built pretty well. And then as for the finer details, let me just zoom into the corner here. In the like sewers, I guess, below the botanical gardens, I need to tilt this a little bit, but you can see Killer Croc and I think that's Bane hanging out in the sewers causing some trouble. That's a little ladder up to Arkham and then you do have the Penguin's duck boat in there as well. And then I'm gonna just gently put this back down. 
And in the cells, you can see a bunch of Batman villains. These are all stickers placed behind glass window panes, but you have the ventriloquist. I'm not sure who that is. I think that's the Mad Hatter, and then that's Man Bat. And then you also have another character like in this corner who for some reason is not behind glass, so I don't love that inconsistency. But I think we can get a slightly better look at him if I remove Wayne Chemicals, or not Wayne, Ace Chemicals. But yeah, I don't know who that is exactly. He seems to be holding a sword, though, and he's just really hard to see. So I don't know that he was totally necessary to include as well. But this is the front of Ace Chemicals. Again, another sticker here. But I really love the use of gray banana pieces as billowing smoke. And if you go up to where that was removed from, you can see the Joker cackling over the vat of acid that turned him into the Joker. Lovely, lovely detail. I really like the vat of acid because it's built using a gray barrel and like a trans neon green minifigure head. So it just looks fantastic. Continuing along, you have the Joker amusement area. Uh, kind of a weird name. Is that actually what it was called in the show? Because I like Jokerland, like that Lego set from 2015, a lot more. But that's a really nice head. Again, nice details. I just wish that they were prints. You have a Ferris wheel, which is probably one of the trickier things to build in this set if you want everything perfectly aligned. But it looks beautiful when it's done. And none of that removes, which was a little bit disappointing to me. But up here um, in this taller building, which I don't know what it's named, you can remove this section, and this is wonderful. It lets you hang the set way more easily. Hanging these LEGO art sets when they have two hooks is pretty difficult because you can't align them as perfectly as you can with picture frames. So to be able to remove sections of this set to let you better line up the nails in the wall is just wonderful, and that's a really, really nice feature that I'm glad the designer included. Continuing along, you have this really nice clock. This is another thing that definitely should have been printed because you need to put the same sticker on three sides of the clock and it should have just been a print. Um, it's built using some nice crate pieces. And then you have the Laugh Palace. This looks wonderful. This is where I think you don't need prints. Stickers are totally fine for something like this because it's just, you know, it's too specific. You can't really recreate this stuff with brick building. So stickers are totally understandable, but yeah, there are four applied here because it says laugh off tonight. Um, there is also a little sticker all the way at the bottom that's advertising the gray ghost. I think that's another villain. I'm not 100% sure. It's like right down there, and that is a really, really nice detail, but sadly, you never really see it. This removes as well, and inside you have the condiment king which I love. That looks so, so funny with him like blasting ketchup and mustard off to the sides. And then you have the Clock King up here and there's even some gears with him underneath the clock. So that is just a really nice combination of stickered and brick built detail. Moving along to the right, you have this diamond building, which again, looks fantastic thanks to all those diamond pieces used. And if you remove this one, you have one of my favorite little hidden parts in the whole set. This seems to be Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy's hideout, and they look awesome. They clearly just stole some diamonds. Harley's got her hammer. Poison Ivy has her vines. I wish we got Ivy in this set. I hope she comes in another one someday soon because we haven't seen her in quite a while. But I really like the kind of black and white checkered like brick built detail behind the diamonds. And then on one side you have red for Harley and then you've got some plants and some green for Ivy. And I like that they're hanging out together because they are an iconic partnership and an iconic couple. And so I like that she's hanging with Harley instead of hanging out with the Joker. Right above them you have the bat signal which is an enormous printed piece. The yellow could be a bit stronger on that black piece because it doesn't exactly, you know, stand out as much as it should, but it still looks really good. And then moving down, you have another, that one building that I said I liked with the, with the other diamonds on it. And there are some removable features here as well because uh, this hospital facade comes right off to reveal Two-Face and he's got a black and white checkerboard pattern there. And another one of my favorite areas in the set is the museum because this facade looks excellent. It looks really like an ornate museum at such a tiny, tiny scale. Frogs are used as gargoyles. You have these gray sausage pieces used as like an archway. It's just wonderful. And if you remove this, you have Raish al Ghul and Scarecrow invading the charity reception. And look at this brick built detail, like that is just amazing. Having like the red billowing cloud of fear gas, 
that looks so good. I, I I just I love how that's been represented. I usually associate the color green more with fear gas, but I think that red works because there is a lot of green in other areas of the set, like where the Riddler's question mark is. And granted, the entire sky of the set is red, but I still think like it's just very striking against like all the gray here. And I also really like I think this is a water tower build up there. This whole section just looks fantastic. And yeah, Ra's al Ghul and Scarecrow are instantly recognizable. And I really love this stair building technique. This has been seen in a couple of sets. It's not built like with any studs. It's just a bunch of these like one by two panel pieces nestled into each other and held in place at the bottom. So it looks really nice. And that same technique is used in multiple places in this set. Moving towards the middle now, we have the GCPD, which looks like a wonderful building. I really like this building technique for the windows, which is used all over the set. It's like these one by one tiles, like the semicircle ones, done in cool yellow. It really looks like a glowing window. And I mean, this is a great facade for the police station. I really love this little bat signal that's coming from the roof, and it lines up perfectly with the actual bat signal like built into the back, so that's really cool. If you remove this section, oh, whoops, I did not grab it. I should grab it from the sides. But yeah, if you remove that, you can see the GCPD inside. I don't know who all the characters are. I mean, one of them should be Commissioner Gordon. But what I love the most is that there's a little fan up here, a little ceiling fan built using a tiny propeller piece. It might be a little bit hard to see, but that's, again, one of my favorite details in the set. And then moving up, this is Wayne Enterprises. You have the sign all the way at the top. Um, and this is the tallest building in the set. You can see it goes almost right to the top of the frame. This does have a little secret area, but I don't know what it's supposed to be because it's not like one of the stickered things. It's just like a bunch of blue tiles. So I don't really get the reference here, but I mean, it looks nice. Directly to the right of Wayne Enterprises, you have Batman himself standing on top of a building looking wonderful this is like the only printed piece in the set besides the bat signal and i mean he looks cool i like his cape billowing in the wind i just wish that uh, more stuff was printed besides him and the bat signal i also really like the smaller blimps that are represented with just a couple of parts and i like this building with the four statues on top made using the nano figures honestly getting printed nano figures in this set would have been wonderful because as you can see this set is pretty much nano figure scale. I mean, they'd be a little bit big for it, but if you look at the size of the figures on the stickers and on that one print, I think it would have been really, really wonderful to get a bunch of printed nano figures in this set like we got in Hogwarts Castle in 2018. Like, that would have made this set even better. I mean, to be fair, it's not like we could have gotten, like, 30 printed nano figures the way that we have, like, 30 characters represented in the stickers. But Hogwarts came with like a solid like 18 or something, so I really would have loved printed nano figures. But yeah, this building looks really nice. The building techniques are a little bit rickettier, like I was just messing around with it a little bit, and like these sections are way looser than some of the other ones. But I mean, the whole gate effect looks pretty nice. And then at the bottom, you have the Gotham Opera with more nice stickers. If you remove that, you can see the penguin who... I guess he's just hanging out by himself because, I mean, I like the curtain detailing, but yeah, he's just kind of opening his helmet, on, or not his helmet, he's opening his umbrella onto nothing, so I don't really know what he's doing there. Maybe he's putting on a one-man show. Moving more towards the right, I have no idea what this building is, um, but it does have a bunch of ice creeping down the front. I really like the way it's built using all of these different ingot pieces in different colors. Just a fantastic building technique, and there is another sticker up here. And there's uh, this building, which, I mean, it has a nice roof. A lot of the buildings are built with, like, these uh, rail plates, which, again, looks fantastic, adds a lot of depth, really cool. But none of that is removable. This section is removable, though. And you can see Mr. Freeze with what seems to be a reporter. I don't know what's going on there. These are references to specific episodes. Each bag calls out an episode in the instructions, which is a really nice touch. But again, for someone who hasn't seen the show, I don't fully understand what's going on here. But I'm pretty sure all of these cool, like, or light aqua pieces, that's my favorite Lego color. Um, I'm pretty sure they're all just supposed to be ice that Mr. Freeze has sprayed all around. And I think that that's a really nice effect. Down here, we have the Gotham City Court, which is another excellently constructed building, a lot like the museum with the stone frogs. 
the really nice step technique and then you do have stickers for the court the scales and then another unprinted nano figure up there that does not remove at all would have been great to see some villain on trial in there but again it's just so detailed i get that it would be hard to to build in a removable fashion you also have Polly's next door which i think is like some kind of bar and then i really like this little sign sticking out the side and it says pool on it uh that's just it's it's a nice touch going up you have a neon cat sign so i'm sure you can guess what we're gonna find in here um if i can figure out how to remove it there we go it is Catwoman with a bunch of little like uh, dog biscuits so that's kind of funny I guess those are supposed to be her paw prints, maybe. Like, she's just dodged her way through, like, a laser grid or something. Uh, but she's also holding a stolen diamond, much like Harley and Ivy were. And then moving up, you have another building technique that you see used for several other buildings uh, with these kind of, like, panels on the side and then just a bunch of jumper plates and one by 2 tiles. And it makes this really nice crisscross pattern that looks like, again, glowing windows. And it just looks cool. And you have a toe ball piece used at the top as like an antenna. And speaking of antennas, next door is Galaxy Broadcasting, which looks fantastic. I feel like I keep saying that, but I mean, all of these buildings are just that nice. And if you remove the top of Galaxy Broadcasting, you will find Clayface in there. Again, all stickers, even those cheese slopes on either side of him. But I mean, he looks good. And if you remove the middle section of Galaxy Broadcasting, you will find another place to hang your art on the wall. Moving down, you can see there is Riddler's question mark inside of a cage. So if I remove this section, or whoops, sorry, just the cage part, there is Riddler above his question mark. Again, one of my favorite areas of the set, just because that brick built question mark is really nice. It's a pain to line up all those one by one pieces, but I think I did a pretty good job. And then all the way to the right of the build, you have Wayne Manor. Sorry, I had to zoom out a little bit. This was where you started the build, and I honestly kind of wish it was the end because I do think that this is, like, the best area on the set. I know I've called out, like, four favorite areas, but I feel like four favorites is acceptable given how much there is in this set. Again, a forced perspective road winding up to the house looks wonderful. I love the manor. I mean, it's pretty small, but it looks nice. Like I said, it's very set apart from the rest of the city. There's a nice degree of separation there. And if you pop off the front of the manor, you will see Alfred inside, which I think is really hilarious and a nice little build for a grandfather clock. So that is really cool. And like I said, I love that moon that's being kind of crossed by these purple or not purple by these dark red clouds. I feel like it'd make more sense if it was higher in the sky, to be honest, but then maybe it would look too close to the bat signal. So that makes perfect sense. I'll leave that off. But then this bottom section with stacked deck, and I can't even read, it says wild something, I can barely even read the text on that other sticker. But this section is like the deepest one in the set, and this is the biggest section that removes. You can see just how thick it is. And behind this, you have the bat cave. This to me is an incredible area of the set because it is in the shape of a bat. You have this whole shelf poking out that the Batmobile sits on and the Batmobile can actually kind of spin around. I don't think this was an intended feature, but you can kind of spin it around. And there is even a little door on the side here that opens up so that you can kind of drive out into the city. That's amazing. I love the features in this set. Like this is just such a good display set and that's such a cool feature. The only problem is that the Batcave doesn't actually fit through it. I think that that's a huge missed opportunity, to be honest, because I would love to display my like Batmobile coming out of the Batcave. And with the opening door feature, it just feels really strange that you can't actually drive the Batcave out. If this thing was just one brick taller, I think it would fit. And so I really wish that the designer had been able to do that because... Like, because this Batcave is, like, the perfect little, like, nanoscale size. It looks like the animated series Batmobile. Um, it looks it looks wonderful. I just wish that I could have it halfway driving out of the cave because I think that it would be the perfect look with this part that's able to move. That being said, the rest of the Batcave is, an, is really incredible. You have the elevator. You have some sticker detail. You've got Robin and Batgirl, like, running to the Batmobile. And then I am going to have to tilt this whole thing back, but you can even see in the corner, it might be a little bit dark there, you've got the giant penny with Abraham Lincoln's face on it, and it is Lego-fied, and it's just, it's such a nice area. 
it's the perfect like conclusion to the set in my opinion here are all of the extra parts included in this set there is so many like this honestly might be the most extra parts i've ever seen definitely up there with like some of the biggest lego sets so that's kind of crazy and then here are the empty sticker sheets you do have two of them there's this one smaller one and one larger one and I really wish that some of them had been printed transparent. And yeah, you can just see how many stickers there are. These are all of the ones for the different characters, the squares, and then everything else is pretty much signage for all of the buildings. The box for this set is a standard 18 plus style black box. As you can see, it is pretty damaged, like the entire top is scrunched up and everything. That's unfortunate, but it's kind of the norm when you're getting big Lego sets from lego.com. But the back of the box is pretty nice and it does show some of what comes off but it doesn't even show everything which i think is pretty interesting because everything inside of this set is so cool i'm surprised it's not highlighted more on the box there are two instruction manuals with this set and i really love the design on the front on the back of the first one you have the bat signal on the back of the second one you have one of the blimps uh, but inside the manual i love all of the information about like the making of the set you can see a bunch of shots from the animated series, and you can tell that the, that the designers are real fans of it, which is really awesome. And there is this nice guide to what you're going to find. And like I said, you do have all of these kind of call outs to episode names in each bag. Each bag is correlated with a specific episode. I should have watched the animated series while I built this set, but I didn't want to because I prefer like focusing on the build rather than watching TV nowadays. But I just think it's really nice, the attention to detail there. Here's what the set looks like with every removable section taken off. There's just so much detail here. There's so much detail in the build. There's so much like hidden stuff to be uncovered. I do think the set has too many stickers. It's so heavily reliant on the stickers. The skyline looks good for the most part without them, although a few of them are very important, like the ones for the Laugh Palace and Joker's Amusement Area. But I just really wish there could have been more brick-built stuff inside the buildings. That feels weird to say because they're so tiny and it's so hard to do. But like I said, nano figures, um, prints, like I just feel like I shouldn't have had to be applying stickers from like the first bag until the last bag in an art set that you know, Lego art sets never have that kind of sticker experience. And so I'd say that that's really the only negative about this set. I also do think the sticker color matching could have been better. I don't think it shows up uh, quite as bad on camera, but in person, the light bluish gray color of the stickers is nothing like the color of the parts. So even with so many stickers in the set, I think if they were all transparent, that would have been way better. So that's just another nitpick I have. But Beyond the stickers, I think that this set is just utterly fantastic. It is beautiful. It is amazing. It was a really, really fun building experience. I love sets like the 1989 Batmobile and everything. But to me, this is kind of the ultimate Batman set. Because you get everything. You get the Batwing, the Batmobile, the Batcave. You get the whole Bat family. You get like every single Batman villain you could dream of. And yes, it's all like in sticker form but you still have them. They're still represented in some way in the set, and I just don't think we're ever going to see another LEGO set that is so Batman-y. All of the minifigures that come with the set are really, really great. Again, there's like tiny things about them that could be even better, but for the most part, like I'd say this set is like a 9 out of 10 or maybe an 8.5 if I'm really like annoyed about the stickers. I don't usually give like numerical ratings to LEGO sets, but maybe I should start because this this was a wonderful experience. I can't wait to put this on my shelf. I can't wait to like take off all of these parts of the buildings every time someone comes over and I get to show them how cool all of the hidden details are. The $300 price point, I feel like it's a little bit high. Other art sets are not that expensive, even the world map, which had 11,000 pieces. And again, very, very different because that was all one by one pieces. But the world map is a lot bigger than this. And I don't know, just $300 feels like a little bit much for me. I feel like this would be a really great $250 set. Even though it has 4,000 pieces, a lot of those pieces are really tiny. So I just feel like $250 would have been the perfect price. But overall, I highly recommend this set. If you guys can get it, I definitely would. If you're a Batman fan, if you like the animated series, I do think that this is like the ultimate set for you. And it is one of like my favorite 
DC sets ever for sure. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe and check out my website, goldenninja3000.com, and I'll see you guys in more videos soon. Bye for now.